Uh, Leon Glixman. I'm professor of building technology and mechanical engineering here at MIT. I start, actually started here at MIT as an undergraduate. And other than a year at Stanford and two years in the military, I've been here ever since. So I guess I'd be considered an MIT lifer. Uh, the building technology program was started uh, by myself uh, about 27 years ago. Uh, it's housed in the architecture department, but it's a joint program between architecture, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, and to some extent electrical engineering. And it's an idea of trying to bring high tech to the architecture field. Uh, and probably one of the unique programs in the country that does this housed an architecture department. So on one hand, we're doing sort of the advanced technology related to buildings in the area of energy, materials, structures. And on the other hand, worrying about how do we develop tools that architects can use so they understand some of this new technology and they can properly use it. Uh, from its beginning, we now have six faculty members and about 30 graduate students, PhDs and masters, who are working in this area on these different subject areas. Uh, and uh, I think it's a really exciting program where we're doing some very interesting novel things on energy in buildings, on materials for buildings, uh, construction techniques, looking at uh, not only buildings but looking at overall communities to understand how you integrate buildings into communities for uh, energy efficiency, for health, both for people inside the building, pedestrians outside the building. Uh, even looking at large-scale cities to look at energy and material flows in the, in the city. So we cover a number of interesting areas, um, and our graduates are, have working in uh, a number, uh, heading up a number of large consulting firms and faculty positions and the like. Well, some of the interesting things that um, I've been working on with some of my colleagues related to what some people think are mundane subjects, which are thermal insulations. How do you reduce heat flow through walls, windows, and the like? And in fact, I have a couple of samples of, on one hand, a very high-tech kind of material that we're using, which is a, an aerogel, which is a material which has nano-sized holes in it, so that in fact, even if air gets in there, it reduces the mobility of the air molecules. So the insulation's probably two or three times better than any conventional insulation that, that's available. On the other extreme, we're doing work in developing countries, and one of my former students has produced this panel in Pakistan, which is an insulation panel, very inexpensive, made from the waste from the paper making process. And the idea is to use this as the insulation on the interior of roofs. In most low income, shall we call them homes or shelters, basically it's just sort of a metal roof. Um, with no insulation in the summer, people are overwhelmed with the heat. In the winter, very, very cold. And just this small amount of insulation can make a major difference in their comfort and the amount of energy efficiency they'd use in a case like that. Uh, in another area, we're doing work on natural ventilation in buildings. Seems like a common thing. You open the windows to keep cool. Uh, unfortunately, for large commercial buildings today, uh, the standard practice, and I see it here in this room, is the windows are sealed up and the building has to be air conditioned most of the year. It turns out if you properly design openings, windows or the like, which allow the air to circulate through the building, uh, uh, in many cases, in many climates, you can reduce or eliminate the need for mechanical air conditioning with the, with the uh, energy savings that goes along with that. Uh, uh, in some places like San Francisco and the like, the climate's such that if you design it properly, you don't have to use any air conditioning whatsoever. In a climate like Boston, you could probably save a half of the energy which is used for air conditioning. And when they do surveys, people who work in these office buildings almost unanimously say they'd love to have a window they could open to have some contact with the outside rather than having a mechanical kind of system.